wasn't an awful lot I could do to to protect the chrome on this without doing a more damage. So what I have done is I've taken them off, cleaned them as well as I could with solvent, etc., etc., and I've filled in all the holes and re-drilled them again and put in new screws so they're good and firm and they're all working nicely now. Uh, what I am going to do now is paint them with a little drop of uh, anti-rust in the places that have been exposed. Uh, there's chrome sprays and all sorts of things, but I think they look messy. So that's what I'm going to do now. Both sides treated with that crust. Now, it won't stop the rust permanently, but it might reduce and give it longer life. And I understand this is going to be taken very good care of this. Uh, music Man bass because it's pre-1984 and vintage. Uh, I've got to get that fixed though. We've taken the pick guard off and a very unique pick guard it is too. Look at the springs bit built on the the pickup and it's all been nice and I found this under it. 14th of November 2002 reassembled and rewired after respray new nut and jack socket fitted R. Lambert. I must ask Chris who La R. Lambert is. That was 21 years ago. This is 2021 yet. 21 years ago. It's 2002. Imagine 2002 being 21 years ago. It's ridiculous. Don't you'll want to see what's inside after I took off the cover. So you can see there's just the standard pots, etc. And a preamp that's been smothered in sealant with all sorts of transistors and things covered wires, which you never figure out in a million years unless you depot it. And some more uh, wiring. I'm just, the wiring is fine. There's no problem there. I don't see anything of an issue. I had a good look at it and uh, the switches are okay as far as I can tell from the sh from firmness point of view. Uh, I think I might just I think I might just take that tape off and put on a, a heat shield piece of tape. But other than that that's all quite good in there so I think I'll close it up after I put that heat shield tape on. What's that little bit of white wire behind? Oh it's going into the inside. I thought it was broken. It's not. Do my little toothpick thing, which I know you all do. I'm sure you all do. Just to give the screws that little bit of a stronger hold. So uh, I'll do that off camera. I just wanted to show you what I'm doing. Okay. Brand new fender screws make everything look a lot better. That I've stained, but I have to put super glue and build up coats and things, but I'm staining the natural wood first to make sure that uh, it gets a real jet black before I start to put a, a gloss coat on. I've removed the pickguard, I think I've shown you that before, and the pickups, amazing spring action on the pickups. So what I'm going to do now is clean it up. I have to file that away a little bit away because it's too stiff. Just needs a, an inch or so, a millimeter or so off it, so it'll fit on it and make it easier for the pickups to go up and down. That's what I'm going to do next. One of the things that I notice about this is these screws are ordinary metal screws, not wood screws, but they're going into just wood. And they go in there and they just go into the wood and use the wood as if the wood was a nut. And I was thinking maybe I should do something with them to stop it. But this guitar was bought in 1979 and it's been working like this since 1979. So I don't think I need to change anything unless the screws don't hold and I might have to put a matchstick in there. But that's the... Uh, pick guard back on again with some nice new fender screws I've noticed if you can spot it you see the slight dent uh, the owner stuck picks in there and that's bent this upwards 
uh, and there was a little crack there but what also has happened is whoever put the pick guard on last time has tightened that down too tight pushed past it and it's bent the sides up but I think that should go away uh, because I have loosened it off and put two, some nice screws in it's not a big deal but now I'm going to try to clean up those pickups I decided not to clean them anymore because I was doing more harm than good or I could be but look this place is getting so messy with so many little jobs it's time to clean it all up and get down to basics okay so we're back to being relatively neat now so strings are on and I have to make a decision about this which I still haven't made I'm thinking I've got a very piece a piece of very strong hardwood there it's quite thick and I'm thinking of taking a piece out there and bringing it down so that I can put the hardwood in not not as thick as that but only to where the edge of the truss rod goes and then gluing it into shape hard down and then filing it down to the level of the fretboard I'm not happy with taking more wood away because the more wood you take away the weaker the neck will be uh, I wish somebody I've asked in a couple of forums if anybody had a an image of what the truss rod looked like uh, because I suspect that the truss rod if I show you a profile of the neck looking at it from a, 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 bro, a, a lo, end on what does that does this mark no it doesn't mark but if that was the neck I'm suspecting that the truss rod holes there and then that bolt is around that hole and if that is the case that this is the piece of wood here that's maintaining the strength I need more information before I decide or do I need more information before I decide because even if that is a hole you see what I what I could do is reduce that down to a sliver but thicker in the middle to go down and hit that sort of carve it and then glue it in I'd have to smooth that all out so the glue would have a good grip uh -huh. Okay, things have gone downhill since I last saw you. I tuned up the guitar, set the bass neck straight, got the heights correct, and was looking at intonation. One of the things that I wanted to do, I was going to do nothing with this. I might have mentioned this earlier. I was going to do nothing with that and see what happened after a month or so. But things happen more quickly than that. The, uh, let me just zoom you down. When I got it up to the right tension, I noticed that the crack had spread. Because you see, I cleaned out the crack to there. The crack had spread downwards. So that gives me more information. That tells me that this nut is pushing against this wood which is something I knew before but I wanted confirmed because it should be welded to a steel plate that shouldn't be moving but it's some other way of design it also tells me that I do need to put a strengthener in there so my plan my cunning plan is I'm going to use a router and root out that the whole way down to the fret. I'm gonna remove the fret, right? And I'm gonna root out enough of the top layer that will allow me to put in a shim, a nice shim of maple to cover. But in this section, I'm going to root down to deeper past that by about the width of uh, about this alky past past that rim and then I'm going to put a, 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 a sheet a small sheet of brass there about that size 
pressing up against that. So I have to root her down further for the brass sheet to go beneath the layer of uh, maple. Because the maple layer is going to, going to be hiding the brass sheet. So that layer of brass sheet there will have, just like I suggested, four screws embedded into the wood as solid as it could. And the end of the brass sheet, which is not going to be there, but the end of the brass sheet will be lower than the wood here, which means that that whole edge of the brass sheet will act as a, 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 a strengthener. Let me, I don't know how you pronounce it, but the brass sheet would be leaning up against the wood that's already there and pressing against it as a whole and not just this pushing against the middle section. So I'm um, hoping that the brass sheet will act as a sort of a wedge. The wedge is probably the wrong, like a, a buffer or a rampart and hold that still. And then when I got that in, when I've got that in and screwed down and maybe even some epoxy beneath it to hold it down, then I'll put on the layer of uh, maple there to cover up what was happening. But well, step by step, I've got to router this out now to where I want it. Okay, so I'll get the camera set up and I'll do that. Here's a sheet of maple, which will be the final sort of covering of everything. And here's a sheet of brass that I have to cut down. You can see the thickness of it. I want that thickness sitting right up against the edge of that. And it'll be cut smaller, obviously, with four holes drilled into it. And it'll be pressing up against that. And hopefully that, it's a very strong piece of brass. Hopefully that with the four screws and maybe some epoxy behind it will give that strength to stop it pushing down through. And then I cover it with the maple. Uh, I'm pretty sure I want to just cover, I want to leave the edges fine and just use a piece of maple the whole way. So I'll set up the camera, take off the fret now, and then set up the router. Okay. And here we go. I've put a drop of water on each side of the fret. And I need to lift it now. A drop of water is hopefully going to make it easier to put the to get the, the the fret out the fret is very low because it's an old fret so i put that under i know you can't see much now right, okay and that looks like it's all nice and come out and it's come out quite clean so i put that in the jar in the jar with the rest of this guitarist bits and pieces dry up that water and there's no fortunately there's no ripping so that's good okay now I've, I've thought of all sorts of I've thought of all sorts of ways to try to get this but the only way I can do it is by my hand. And I'll know I'm going to leave a rough edge up there and a rough edge up there. But then I'll come around later and use a very sharp chisel to make a straight edge. So I'll switch you off at the moment to set up the uh, router. Okay. Everybody and their granny tells me it needs a new neck. Because they shaved this fret down too much and it was this is what caused it to split but if it needs a new neck why not try this and see so i'm going to take off a very small shaving i'm going to do it like this uh and just i'm not i'm going to try not to go past actually should i i should make a mark down where i don't want to go past i don't want to go past it doesn't matter if it's uneven but I, I try not to go past that if I go past it it's not the end of the world so right let's switch her on and stand by for the noise
Okay. You see I'm only taking off a thin layer to see how we're doing. We'll go deeper and deeper and deeper. And if any remember before that got loose, it's on tight as I can get it now. dust down a bit and see where we are. Rough looking, isn't it? I, I, I'm not depending on this for strength, so I just need to get down to the depth where I need to get, and then I put a piece of spruce on that. It doesn't have to be extra strong. It's when I get down deeper to that that I'll need strength, but I won't need glue strength because I'm going to put brass, brass with plates on it. So let's just try to tidy this up a bit more. What does this tell me now? This tells me that I was thinking of some sort of jig, but I couldn't get a jig made with what I have. So what I'm going to use is a chisel now to smooth this out. The router's just not as controllable as it needs to be. If I had a router jig, I could set it up, take the neck off and do all that. But I'm going to use a hand chisel. Okay, come back to you. Router's handy, but it's... It's handy for some things, not all things. This is this has just been sharpened and it's not really still sharp enough. Sorry. Let me just see. I know what you can see. Nine years later, I tried chisels and everything, but the wood's too hard. So eventually using a sandpaper rounded
Believe it or not, this is a sharp chisel. Right, okay, so what do we do? Try it this way. Am I gonna burn my fingers here? Ah, come on, off you come. This is the last one of these I have. I'll have to order some more, but I think it might just do tonight's job. Right, so turn it round, switch it on. Right, we can see the bar beneath. Right, and it, 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 it confirms what I suspected. Right, okay. We've taken a tiny bit off the bar, but not a lot. Right. So what I need now is the patience to clear away. All right, okay. And the, by the way, the truss rod's loosened completely. Okay, thank you. I didn't want to do that, but thank you. Right, I'm going to need a newer chisel. So I'm not going to play with it anymore tonight, but the intention is still, the intention hasn't changed. I'm going to widen that out. Where's, where's, the place has got messy. Within seconds it's got messy. Right, okay. Oh, here we are here. I'm going to widen that out, put that bar, put that, put that piece of brass there, but it's going to stretch right across and down four screws on the hard bit, and it'll be flat down to the bar, and then screwed down. But that chisel is useless. I can't, I can't get it sharpened at all. So we'll come back whenever I've got a sharper chisel to work out and tidy up all this area. By what I had to use to get any sort of depth was that and I had to go in and use the flat end of it now it's almost right when I cut that bit of brass I might actually need to move it over a little bit further I'll just show you how I do that I need to move over a bit further It smells lovely, it smells like a barbecue, but now I put that plate in. I needed I needed it over that way to get the screws in so into good strong wood. And so when I put that plate in, I might even move it a bit further to the sides. Put that plate in, screw it down, uh, put some epoxy resin in as well, some super glue, some Evo Bond, some spit everything to hold that plate down and then that that metal would press against the plate and hopefully it'll be held against that back piece of wood as you see the back piece of wood is beneath that and that would hold it that way I'll have you square off the corners till we have a square plate but I'm going to stop tonight uh, and take a breath and I'll, I'll rethink and just think how everything's working Okay, as you can see the nut is too high, I need to bring that down, but I haven't got an awful lot of room, but I can bring it down quite a bit. The neck is going to be good whenever I've brought the neck down, 
and there's a contraption I used, a brass plate pressing against a truss rod and the flat of the brass plate truss pressing against the wood. Now, at the edge of this, there's a slight, a slight bend in the brass. So I think this is going to work. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bit of hardened metal fabricated and make it slightly longer, exactly the same, but hardened metal. Because uh, I was tempted to put in another sliver of brass, but sitting sideways to give more, instead of having the sharp edge, that, that kind of sharp edge pressing against it, a flatter edge so I suggest now we get a bit of uh, hardened metal fabricated with a slightly wider edge at the bottom because the the neck angles going down and the brass is pressing into the wood at an angle so if we can make get a wedge a slight wedge on it then that end would be thicker and more pressure against the wood the screws could be holding it, but they're only there to hold the, the, the thing in place. I might actually, when I'm getting the piece of metal fabricated, instead of having it straight, make it bent slightly so that it can go down a bit deeper. But I'm not sure about that yet. But that's where we are. Okay. BigClive.com. It's a, it's a great uh, YouTube channel. Anyway. If I draw a very rough shape of the neck, right, and that's the rough shape of the neck, right? Now, they've made a little hole there to go through to, I don't know how far it goes through, but then that washer sits around that hole and presses against it. And, it's, and what's happened is it's pressed, it's too close to the fret, so it's starting to split the fret up there. So that washer, that nut that they have there is pushing back on the wood. So what I'm doing is, as you saw, I'm putting a bit of brass there and a couple of little strips of brass down the sides against the nut to try to hold it in place. But what if, for whatever reason, uh, whether it's uh, too much shaving away of the top or anything like that there, the little piece of nut is very close to the top fret and started to split it the whole way down excuse my less than accurate what does that look like that looks like somebody with a pair of sunglasses doesn't it you know or anyway <laughs> okay bye bye okay let's begin uh it took three weeks for the company to come back and drill those holes for me they were drills like that. I nearly gave up on the company, right? Uh, that little scratch there says the arrow goes that way. And that goes in there. Now, one of the problems I have, if I can explain it to you, the only screws I have that would fit in there are these little brass screws. And they are the only ones that would countersink in because if I leave it above the thing, I won't have enough won't have enough room for the wood to go on top, and we can't have any pressing up of this. So this has to be really firm, screw, screwed down. But those things are as weak as as weak as anything. They're only for show. So I'm going to have to use the fender screws, which are a little bit better. So what I managed to do is I managed to. Fortunately, I bought some drill bits which said they had titanium heads on them. But when they came, I thought they looked like wooden drill bits, so I didn't give them much credibility. Uh, so I used that titanium head, and it actually worked quite well in drilling a countersink on the thing. So I can use these now, these screws, because they're stronger. 
Now I'm not going to swing on these screws. There, it's not like I need to swing on them to, to get it to go really tight down. I, I just need it to hold. But I'm going to belt some braces because what happens is that this steel nut moves. When you press it, this nut will press up against the wood. And I think you can see a little gap in the wood there. That nut moves the whole way up to the wood before it gets a real purchase against the wood. So the top being cracked, it didn't get as much purchase. So this is supposed to go on and stay down. And the nut presses against that and it holds down. Now when I did the test, this started to come up, move up, which would be no good. Uh... So uh, I can only but try this now. So what I'm also going to do, belt and braces, I think I began to say, and I'm going to use some JB Weld, which I did a test with. If you remember, I did a test with it. And I'm going to put it in as much as I can all around the place without affecting the truss rod, because I don't want it to go near the truss rod. Although the truss rod moves, it moves up and down the truss rod. It doesn't turn around, it just moves up and down. So I'm going to use some JB Weld. What's that? That's the hardener. And I think I've got a slightly, I need slightly more of that. All right. So just a bit. Why do these things have to be sticky and messy? Or is it just me that's sticky and messy? Right, a toothpick. And I'm going to stir this well. I'm going to now move the guitar back into the center view. Bass guitar, of course. Right. And my, my cunning plan is to put a little drop there in the holes these holes have been pre-drilled. I'm going to take my time with this because it might be drying up okay but it's got to be done right or it's not going to work. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to put some on the edges to hold the edge of the metal plate because we can't have that metal plate pushing up. Right and some at the back of the metal plate so that just not do that and some at the side right so we, we don't want it uh, i'm not that worried if it does push into the, the the truss rod because the truss rod will move when i tell it to move because i can force it a bit right so there you go that's as much as i'm going to do for that and hopefully that'll stay solid while I'm doing this. So here we go. Right, that's just, I don't want to get any of my hands because then I tend to rush and I don't want to rush. If I can keep my hands relatively free of the gunk. Right, okay. Now that gunk should stick to the screw as well. Now, let's just keep moving on. I have measured these screws so they'll go deep into the neck, but they won't pop out the other side, which would be disastrous. Right, they've got to be firm. And they can't be crooked because if they they get crooked in any form or fashion then they'll sit slightly high so and i didn't like the feel of that oh look for fuck's sake the screw snapped and I wasn't putting that much effort on it. Must have been weak. Alright. 
Okay, right, okay. It is what it is, as they say. That was very unfortunate. Right, okay. Right, now I don't have options here because that's blocking the hole. Uh, can I get a micro screw in in any form or fashion in this? Let me just see, even if it's slightly. I don't think I can. Just on the place where I didn't want it to be. Let me just see. No. What I see there is metal. Right, so what I'm going to try to do is fill it up and push the JB weld into that. So the JB weld will hold like a screw head. That's all I can do. Because I can't take that out and dig it out again because I don't have the, the luxury of doing that. Because I don't have the room. Right, okay. Now. Right, here's where I get my hands dirty. I don't want anything at the front. So let me just use my hands. Oh dear, oh. Imagine a screw snapping. Imagine a screw snapping. That's just a real pain. Well, let me just see where we are with the the height of those screws. Yeah, they're just about giving me some room to manipulate them and maneuver. Right, okay, I'm not going to tighten them anymore. I'm just going to feel them. Why did that snap? Why did you snap? Let me just clean the edges. I don't want... I may have to take that down a bit. Why did you snap on me? Why did you snap? Were you just a weak bastard, are you? I suppose I could put that in there, but what good would that do? Yeah, let's put it in. Let's put it in because it, it'll hold against the JB weld. And the JB weld will hold against it. So maybe it'll just give me that little bit of a... Let me just press it in. It's just sitting there. Right, okay, well. Now I'm going to let that sit for two or three days. And come back to you. Okay. Uh, what do I want to do with this JB weld? Is there anything else I want to do with it? No, nothing. Okay, that's not going to be touched for two or three days. All right, ciao, bye, bye, bye.